once again we're with the very lovely and today it's a very sunny corner of Glenwood and Lunt. We are once again up here on the stage at the Heartland Cafe where every Saturday morning we bring you another edition of the Live from the Heartland yeah, Show. I don't know why I'm not good morning, like Michael. Good morning, Katie Hogan. How's it going? It's going good. I ran down to Nashville. I saw some music. Had a good time. You are such a groupie. We're going to have a new band called uh, Truck Stop Pizza. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, okay. We have a busy show today, Michael. We've got uh, our good friend uh, Bob Lawson in from the West Coast talking to us about UAW, transnationals in the South, organizing all over the place, and probably Walmart, s- uh, some fast philos- food stuff. Some philosophy along the way. We've got Sue O'Halloran, uh, also a very good friend from many years, uh, the storyteller par excellence, who's going to talk to us about her. Uh, online storytelling festival coming up. We've also got Richard Berg going to talk to us about the Midwest action against drones. Uh, we've seen Richard in here for years too, so yeah. he's an old friend. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and another gonna, old friend. And we're going to kick it off with John Davis, who is not brand new to this show. He's been here before. Good morning, John. Good morning. How you doing? So far, so good. Properly caffeinated. That a baby. Oh, that's good. That's what we need. Fired up. So uh, ready to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, how about that? Um, uh, John, you are part of the participatory budgeting gang, right? That's correct, yeah. I'm on the uh, leadership committee here for uh, participatory budgeting here in the 49th Ward, and um, we're kicking off our fifth year. Fifth uh, year, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. we were the first ward in the city to adopt participatory budgeting, which um, basically means that... Uh, you know, as you know, each ward in the city gets about a million dollars to spend every year on capital infrastructure improvements. In most of the wards, the alderman, him or herself, decides how to spend that money with whatever Ooh. input they seek. Here in the 49th Ward, though, Joe Moore was the first one to adopt participatory budgeting, which means it opens the process to every voter in the ward, or every resident in the ward, age 16 and older. You get to, um, you know, p- propose ideas, um, we ask that uh, you know, for people to volunteer to be on committees that take a look at those ideas, shepherd them through. The, you know, can it work? How much will it cost? You know, does it you know get it ready for a uh, ballot that in the spring, every resident in the ward, 16 and older, gets to vote on which projects will get funded. 16. Yeah. Every 16. I like yeah, that. 16 and older. Yeah, it's a fun thing. Um, we need to up the number of people who vote on this. Then you know, don't we? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I voted outreach, on it every year. Yeah, community outreach, furthering community outreach is always, um, you know, a goal of a ours. Task. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, a task indeed. Um, it's reaching people who aren't part of the process and bringing them into, not just voting, but the civic process of really community and neighborhood and place making. So this kicks off with a bunch of assemblies, which are starting this week, which is why Correct. you're here now, so that people hear about it and get get there. Absolutely, absolutely. The uh, neighborhood assemblies, this is the first um, opportunity for people to um, come and hear about participatory budgeting, find out about it, um, start proposing ideas, and hopefully volunteer to be part of the process. Um, The uh, neighborhood assemblies kick off next week. Tuesday, October 1st is the first one at Sullivan High School, uh, followed by uh, Wednesday at the United Church of Christ, um, not uh, too far from here. United Church of Rogers Park, we call that. I'm sorry, yeah, United Church of Rogers Park. Mm -hmm. And then um, next Saturday, October 5th is the first ever Saturday meeting we um, are going to hold. Uh, That'll be at Willie White Park up on Howard Street. Uh, Meetings will continue um, the week of, um, you know, October 7th, and then uh, we'll conclude on the 16th um, at uh, Potawatomi Park, and a uh, a Spanish language meeting on um, October 17th at um, St. Jerome, right down the street from here. Yeah. And at those meetings, people not only get to say, I think it would be a good idea if we did thus and so, and right. some, of, some of the ideas in the past have included um, some wonderful uh, artistic things that <laughs> may or may not have actually come into being. I remember we voted for uh, artistic uh, bicycle uh, locking artistic, places. Yeah, artistic bike racks. Um, bike racks. That was, that's... I'll get back to that in a moment, but nah, some of the things don't have to. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> some of the things that we've done, um, you know, underpass murals. We've got 26 underpass murals completed, another seven on the way, and once we, once that's all said and done, uh, the 49th ward will have the most underpass murals of any ward in the city. So speaking we'll, of we'll which, there's a ribbon cutting today for this mural right out here. There both you, murals. Yeah, the, there uh, you go. The bike Who are those people they put on that mural? <laughs> we, maybe we'll find out today. <laughs> yeah. It is a mystery. Yeah, but um, if I may quickly, um, some of the other projects that um, have come about 
thanks to participatory budgeting or because of it. Um, the bicycle lanes, the explosion of bike lanes since, you know, in the last five years on Tui, on Rogers. Um, this year, people voted to put bike lanes on Clark Street. Um, that's a direct result of participatory budgeting. Um, bus, you know, bench, bus stop benches. And um, the dog park. The Can't dog forget park, about yeah. the dog park. Yeah, oh, absolutely. No, the dog park at Potawatomi, that was a big one. Um, yeah, the, the big belly machines all up and down uh, Sheridan Road was a big one. So, um, John, we, we've always covered this on the radio show. Um, might you come back after the, uh, the assemblies kick off and let people, keep people informed on how they can uh, get involved? Oh, absolutely. We certainly he, announced He likes of. coming on the show when he's not <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> okay, there you go. Wow, that's generous. Um, <laughs> you're assuming I'm in the gym. Um, yeah, we will be happy to come back. Um, and people can participate, come out to the assemblies. Um, you can also go to uh, the ward's website, uh, ward49.com. Um, uh, there you'll find out more information. You can sign up for email bulletins and alerts and uh, get more information about participatory. Are we, uh, off of last year's voting, uh, people tend to be going more for sidewalks and streets and I think I, we are currently having 30 some odd streets repaved you got a right number yeah well um, and sidewalks. is it ever fun <laughs> <laughs> sidewalks and streets have been a big one especially this past year because of all the um, you know two things the recession um, really squeezed the, the amount of money for street and sidewalk repair and the people's gas work that they've been doing throughout the ward um, was really a pain but you know, it's necessary infrastructure work, but uh, now that they're completed, we're doing 16 streets that were approved over the last two or three years worth of voting. Those are getting done this year, this kind of ongoing right now. Okay, um, and that email, I mean, the, um, the website again is... The website again is www.ward49, that's the number 49, .com. Dot .com. All right, John Davis. Thank you for your participation in this uh, magnificent practice. I got one quick question you, yeah. to you. Do you know how many wards are participating this time? Um, I believe we it were is, the first. We there were, three. were the first, and now there are three three wards total. So it's us. It, it's us. So far, yeah. Plus us. So now it's four total. Okay, we're moving on up. Moving on. Up. All right. Thank you Thanks, so much. John. Thank you very much for having Go me. Go ahead. Finish and your you breakfast. You are listening kiddo. to the live from the Heartland show. And I think rather than do any music, Katie and I will banter while our pal Richard Bird comes on up here, and we're going to talk a little bit about drones and how maybe we can prevent them, etc. So much, uh, so much for banter, Michael. <laughs> you I'd banter. Uh, banter. There is today the uh, Rogers Park Harvest on Howard Street event. That's today up on uh, Howard Street. It's the, uh, I don't know how many th annual, but uh, it's at Willie White Park, 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, food, music. Uh, okay, it'll be good. Yeah, you know, all that stuff. Richard Berg, you are a, a guy I've regularly seen uh, chowing down in, in, at a table at the Heartland. Welcome home for, uh, for this. Oh, it's great to be here. It's a beautiful uh, Saturday morning at Heartland Cafe. Great food, great drink, and uh, you know, and we're talking about trying to make politics. a better world. And great politics. That's exactly <laughs> right. So it's great to be here with you too. So about uh, six months ago, we had Medea Benjamin up, and when I saw the uh, notice uh, that about the events this weekend, I actually did reach out to her because we had such a good time with her. And you are here instead. I gotta say, you're missing your pink. <laughs> I, I am missing the pink. He's got a little <laughs> pink in this shirt. Yeah. Of course, but he is uh, the code pink uh, chairperson. Uh, her plane is landing right now as we're speaking, so uh, uh, she'll be at the events all weekend. This is important to her, and uh, she's been a major spokesperson against drones, uh, you know, across the country and across the world. Actually, she uh, she's doing a uh, book release of her book, um, which I forget the title of, but it's Drones Yada Yada by Medea Benjamin. March on Boeing is today. Okay, there's two events this weekend, yeah, if I out. could. Mm -hmm. um, today at 3 o'clock, there's going to be a, um, a march, an anti-war protest that includes the drones. What happened was uh, we, we've been planning this Midwest Regional Conference uh, against drones, uh, which is called MAD, Midwest <laughs> Action Against Drones. But uh, because of the actions in uh, Syria, we've included that. That's been a lot of the discussion uh, that's going on. So this group also opposes uh, the bombing and U.S. intervention in, in Syria. So both of those things, there's going to be a, a protest today at 3 o'clock at Millennium Park. 
and they're gathering at uh, uh, Columbus and Monroe, which is right across from the Art Institute on Monroe Avenue there. And then we're going to march to Boeing, which is uh, um, a major uh, uh, maker of drones. And One of our newest corporations yes, making its home base here in Chicago. And we've spent a lot of our tax money uh, to draw them here. And, uh, uh, and they've been active in, in things like closing schools and things like that as well. But they also, they, you know, th we thought when they, they came here that they would be involved in uh, making aircraft and, and helping people transport around the world. Um, and instead, you know, as we've done some investigation, we found that uh, Boeing is a major a military producer and uh, they're involved in, uh, very involved in, in the drone actions and they want to be the major producer for the military of the killer drone. The right. killer drone. The killer drone. It's yes. on us. Well, the, the we've had right. uh, Nancy Kelly on this show. She also, uh, uh, Kathy, Kathy Kelly. Kelly. I'm sorry, Kathy Kelly. Um, a, a shout out to Nancy Kelly, who does exist and is a neighbor. Um, <laughs> I ain't here sorry the other about day. that. <laughs> um, but Kathy also wrote a wrote a book about drones. And uh, when we had her on, way I mean, it's now over three years ago or so. Uh, we also talked about domestic spying use of drones as well. Is that yeah? Is, I mean, is that proceeding as well? Absolutely. Um, there the um, there's been some articles that have been out lately that you know the FBI is using drones right now um, to spy on uh, people in the United States. So there's a whole slew of uh, civil liberties issues that will be covered at the conference uh, as well, which I'll, I'll give that plug now, I guess. But uh, um, so the protest is today at three at Millennium Park, but tomorrow. There's a conference uh, at Kent Law School, uh, which is going to be all day, where we're going to be talking about these things. It starts at 9:45 uh, a.m. and it goes till 3 a, uh, 3 p.m. And uh, the Kent College is uh, is uh, 565 West Adams, so it's in the West Loop there. You're not going to get any Bear fans at that one. Um, probably not. <laughs> but maybe. Well, you know, you can uh, you can maybe wear. Uh, you well, know, the these days you can wear your headphones. <laughs> you can you can look at the score. I always am amazed, though, how progressives always kind of schedule events during ball games. But that's just a little <laughs> side note. Boy, I'll say. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I just think, you know, when I think about domestic spying, I thought maybe NSA had that covered. You know, that maybe they wouldn't need, you know, tons of metal in the air as well, looking yeah, at the in, citizens. In fact, even like our group... Um, the Chicago Anti-War Committee um, came out of uh, a lot of the, uh, the the raids on people's houses that the FBI did not so long ago mm -hmm. of uh, trade union and anti-war activists. And then some of those folks got involved in the, the protest against NATO when they came to Chicago. And so th that's how this organization was actually born, was uh, in resistance to those kinds of civil liberties issues. You know, we weren't going to do this, but you're also a, a trade union activist. And there was some really good thing happened yesterday at University of Minnesota, right? Yes, yes. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the university, um, I'm, I'm active with uh, the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees, uh, AFSCME, and uh, um, the, there's been, uh, um, you know, protests and fights for health care at the University of Minnesota for some right. time. And, and uh, um, it, it, you know, Billy Bragg's been involved in it, the, the singer, and uh, Shireen uh, Horzaka is the president of the local up there, and, and they've just done great work. Yeah, yeah, I saw the notices about it. The way I get news these days, Facebook. You know, Richard, you did mention the FBI uh, and the raids on uh, activist houses. I know that uh, uh, J Josh Losbecker is one of the people involved. And I, uh, what's the latest status on that case? You know, this is, uh, uh, in my mind, a, a terrible thing. You know, it's, it's three what? years since this happened. And uh, the FBI still has not returned uh, uh, all the materials that were seized in those raids. It was, um, and these are just people like you and I who go to protest, organize uh, to try to make a, a better world. Uh, Joe was a, a chief steward at the University of Illinois Chicago um, SEIU union, and um, the uh, right now it, because they, the uh, FBI doesn't comment on ongoing investigations, they won't say. But the, the, there is a grand jury, and they're continuing to harass these people, you know, three years after the fact. And it's just uh, people that are, uh, you know, peace activists like us. Who, led, uh, who uh, helped organize some demonstrations at the Republican Convention uh, back uh, in 2008 yes, up in that, Minnesota. That, that's what started it. There was uh, the FBI sent uh, a spy into the anti-war committee uh, when they protested the uh, Republican Convention in uh, St. Paul. Yeah. Well, you do good work. What's the uh, what's the status of drones these days? I mean, how many drones are out there? How much are they being used domestically 
or abroad. Well, I mean, uh, seems like it's a real growth industry for the war industry, especially in Pakistan and uh, Yemen. There's been lots of bombings. Uh, the 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 rate, you know, a U.S. military study recently showed that the rate of civilian deaths from a drone as opposed to a manned aircraft bombing is ten times higher. That was based on uh, Afghanistan. Uh, um, you know, the study that the military did of what, what they were doing in Afghanistan. Um, there's been uh, studies that show in, in uh, Pakistan where they, despite the, the fact that they say there's only a small number of terrorists that have died, there's hundreds of people that have been documented, you know, o older people, children whose names and, and family histories were able to be dug out by a, uh, an organization whose name escapes me now in England, uh, uh, the Center for Investigative Reporting or something of, of that nature. But so it's, it's, it's a travesty. Um, both in terms of civil liberties, but also for uh, for people that are you know peace activists and people that are concerned uh, about having a, a you know a better world and just the, the terrorism of it too. In North in Pakistan, the uh, uh, Iraq veterans against the war have spoken out about this, and they're part of our our group that's doing this today too. But they've. Uh, uh, you know, if you have drones flying over your house, you know, every, you know, several times a day, people are running in the house, children are scared. It creates a terror amongst uh, families living uh, in that part of Pakistan. Well, as we know, war is... <laughs>